Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we've got a very special video for you. We're going to show you how to manually open and close the uh, armored doors for the conning tower. We call these bank vault doors because each one weighs about 3,800 pounds, nearly two tons. It's 17.3 inches thick, class A armor plate. And when it seals up, your bridge crew is perfectly protected inside the conning tower. If you watched any of our previous conning tower videos, such as the one where we uh, climbed up through the inside of the conning tower, you'll see we uh, ran into the electrohydraulic motors that are used to swing this door open and closed. It was always my assumption that uh, because there are multiple doors and ladders in the conning tower that can get you up to different levels, that if something happened to those electrohydraulic motors and the doors wouldn't open, that's fine. The crew would just go out the emergency escape or uh, up the other ladder. So if you watch the video where we climbed up through the conning tower firing, following the uh, armored wiring trunk, uh, you'll see that uh, even though I thought there was also supposed to double as an emergency escape trunk from this position, there's not enough room in the bottom hatch to fit a person through. So, uh, how then can the doors be opened in an emergency? Well, one of our longtime volunteers said, oh, there, there's a hand crank that can go up on there. So, uh, came up and looked, and sure enough, there's a hand crank here. Uh, but still, in those other conning tower videos, you saw that uh, where the electrohydraulic motors are is just full of hydraulic fluid that's leaked out of the system. So I didn't actually think that the system would work. We've had a group of volunteers who've been working on uh, repainting the conning tower. And uh, they said, hey, wouldn't it be great if we could crank the door out of the way so they could actually get to the area behind it? Uh, and I had initially told them, yeah, it would be great, can't happen. Well. I was wrong. So let me show you how this works. First of all, this uh, shaft here is what the uh, electrohydraulic motor acts on. That's the hinge for the door. So you notice how there's this section built out of the side of it and a corresponding uh, notch cut into the armor plate here. And that's not cast in, that is somebody machined that out um, intentionally for the door to fit. Because this shaft is on the outside of the conning tower, even though the conning tower probably isn't going to be penetrated by anything, that could be shot away. So this will keep the door latched in place uh, so that when this is shot away, it doesn't just fall out of the opening. So, pretty smart idea. And obviously you cannot open the door at all at that point. Uh, however, you've got another door on the other side, and odds are, if both of these have been shot away, you've got much bigger problems. There are two different sorts of hand cranks with this door. The first one... slots onto the locks so that those will actuate. So you'll notice that the door has a lock uh, to hold it in the open position. It's so heavy, I don't think it would move without that lock, but uh, hey, I've only known the ship as a stationary museum ship where she's not rocking and rolling, so clearly they thought that was something they needed. So first we've got to undo that. All right, so now all of my locking pins are retracted inside the armored door. Now we can actually crank it. So I believe this column is the hydraulic fluid running from the motor to uh, actuate the door. And on it is this, we now know it's a gearbox with a slot cut into it. A slot that mates up perfectly with this handle. So if there was an emergency and the electrohydraulic motor was not running, you can crank this open. Now, Fair warning, 
it takes forever and a day to do this. There's a tremendous amount of gear reduction in here. So I've got to do many cranks just to get uh, it to move a little bit. So obviously it's not the most efficient means, but it still works. So now that the door is closed, we can actuate the locking pins. And now we're locked inside the single thickest piece of armor on board an Iowa class battleship. Already with the door closed, it's starting to feel pretty claustrophobic in here. And that's uh, from a guy who's climbed through a gun barrel and you name it, 10 other places on the ship that are much tighter than this. But uh, even with the view slits here open and the glass covers that would normally be on them not in place, uh, it starts to get real stuffy in here real fast. The air just stops moving. So, Let's crank this sucker back open, and uh, that way visitors coming to see the ship later today can take a look in here. So our last step is to lock this in place, and now she's not going anywhere. I will point out that the door has grease fittings that you can put a grease gun on here and lubricate this. We have not. All of this lubricant you see on these hinges dates back to at least 1991 when the ship was taken out of service. So not only is it still lubricated so that it moves fine, the hydraulic fluid in the line is still there or else I don't think we'd be able to crank this open. And uh, Like you've seen, we are leaking it down on the O3 level where the motor is. Uh, but like I always say, if you aren't leaking hydraulic fluid, you don't have any hydraulic fluid. So clearly there's still enough in this line to keep it pressurized. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to play with these mechanisms yourselves, Sign up for a curator's behind the scenes tour. I'll take you almost anywhere on the ship you want to go and we'll mess around with some of these hands-on features of the ship that still work. What do you think the safest place to be is in combat on an Iowa-class battleship? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from viewers like you. In particular, it's the support viewers like you have given us over the last year that's allowed us to go from making one video a week uh, to making multiple videos a week. And in making these videos, we're able to find out that cool features like this still work. So we really appreciate your continued support. It really helps us bring the ship back to life and gain a deeper understanding of how she works. And as always, remember to like, share, and subscribe so that you're notified when we put out new videos with cool stuff like this. Thanks for watching.